Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. Okay, uh, buck knives. Um, what can I say? I am going to be doing something that really puts me outside of my comfort zone. Uh, but I'm doing it because a lot of people have asked me about buck knives. And uh, do you collect buck knives? Do you own buck knives? Uh, what do you think of buck knives? Uh, and I have answered them a couple times, basically saying I really don't have an opinion of them. Uh, and there's a reason for that. And it's mainly because I really... Uh, it, how, can, how can I put this? There's... Um, all the way back when I was in college, this is all the way back in the 70s, uh, that was, I think, when I was first exposed to uh, buck knives. And um, I did not own one. I actually had a, a Camillus knife that I was carrying at the time, and somebody else bought a buck knife, and they were talking about how great buck knives were, and then somebody else basically uh, cutting down the person because he had a buck knife. And... Uh, and uh, at that time, um, a person older and wiser than me actually commented, yeah, that's the way it goes. You either have, uh, you either love buck knives or you hate buck knives. Uh, and there's no in between. And, um, and it really does seem that way within the knife community, at least among, uh, the buck knife lovers and the buck knife haters. There actually is a, a big group of people in the middle who um, neither hate nor love buck knives. And some of those people are completely indifferent. Some of them lean towards, I would rather have something else. And then there are the people who say, well, I like buck knives, but there's other knives out there that I also like. Um, uh, we like the term fanboy or whatever. I guess there are out there the buck fanboys and everything. And maybe there are the ones who are asking me. Or maybe it's the people who hate, who hate buck knives who are asking me. Um, but really, um, I don't have um, a real strong opinion one way or the other about buck knives. Uh, but they are not the knives that um, I seek out. Let me put it that way. And it has nothing to do with the quality of a buck knife or anything like that. Um, and so what this basically is, is going to be um, the introductory video for my playlist of buck knives. And uh, what I'm going to do with this video is show you um, the six USA made buck knives that I own. And um, I think it's going to surprise a lot of the buck knife fanboys out there because um, there are knives that people imagine when they hear buck knife. Um, one of them is the biggie. I mean, when somebody says buck knife, this is really what most people think of, the buck 110 folding hunter. Um, I will talk about this in the very near future. But this is really, when when someone says buck knife, is this not the knife you think of? Is this not the knife you imagine? The buck knife 110, the buck 110 folding hunter. Uh, and I did not buy this one. This one was gifted to me because uh, a long time ago I said, it's, it's a knife I have no desire to own. Um, the only way I will ever own it is if somebody gives it to me. And uh, I mentioned at the time also that if someone gave it to me, I'm sure I would be impressed with it and I would really like it. And that is true. I'm, I'm very much impressed with it. I really like it. It's a quality made knife and everything else about it. There's nothing I can fault it for uh, other than the um, 420HC uh, uh, Boss heat treated uh, blade. Um, and is there a fault to that? No, there's plenty of other knives that I have that have similar 420 high carbon steel blades in them that I think are just fine. So um, there's nothing wrong with the Buck 110. Uh, and yeah, there are actually uh, variations of the Buck 110 out there that are 
uh, have even better steel in it because uh, Buck fans demanded or wanted or requested higher quality steel for the main blade. And they've got it in S35 and all sorts of other stuff out there too. So the Buck 110 though is really the iconic Buck knife. I have one. There are other people out there who do nothing but collect Buck 110s and they have them from every year and everything else and different uh, blade steels and everything else out there. Not something I'm ever going to do because, uh, well, I'm not that big of a fan of Buck knives and it has nothing to do with the quality of them or anything else. Um, another, the other iconic Buck 110, I guess this one would be considered iconic. This is a uh, one of their fixed blades. This is the Buck 119, and it's got that leather sheath that protects the knife completely, you know, kind of like a a pistol holster type of sheath. Um, I did not buy this one either. This one um, belonged to my uh, brother-in-law who has since passed away. This was a knife that he carried and did use. Um, it's a beautiful knife. I like it. Um, I do not know the blade still in this knife because I don't know what year it was actually made. It just states on here, Buck 119 USA. I do not know enough about Buck knives to actually give it an approximate date on this. Uh, has some nice little finger grooves here. I believe it's an aluminum pommel and an aluminum uh, cross guard going on. Wonderful blade, false edge up here. I'm sorry, swedge up here. This is unsharpened. Nice blade here. As you can tell, it was used and it has been sharpened. So uh, my brother-in-law must have liked the knife because he actually did use it. It's a well-constructed, well-made knife. Uh, a knife that I would have never bought simply because I have other knives in my collection that do the same thing from companies that I would normally buy from you know, or brands I'd rather buy from. For instance, uh, Camillus. I'd much rather have a Camillus knife of this size than a buck. Why? It's just personal preference. I've also got a K-Bar knife that is very similar to this um, that also belonged to my brother-in-law. Um, I don't collect K-Bar knives, but I really like that one. And because of the personal connection to my brother-in-law, uh, I really appreciate the knives and uh, I'm glad to have them in the collection. Now, um, the other, I've got two other, I've got two other fixed blade buck knives that I bought uh, that are USA made and I really like them, but they're not what people think of when you hear buck knives. And so, well, let me show you those two knives. Um, and uh, like I said, I really like these knives and I actually use and carry them. Uh, this one especially, I uh, is this the uh, Silver Creek or the Clearwater? I can't remember. Um, that's the other problem. Um, I just, I should have prepared a little better. I think this is the Clearwater. Uh, notice it's a bait knife. You got, this does not, when somebody says buck knife, this is not what comes to mind. I have a feeling this is not the knife anyone is thinking of when you hear Buck. But this is a knife that Buck made, and I really like it. It's got this um, dual density, over-molded, uh, uh, soft rubber grip and heavy nylon here. Um, a full tang, you see it goes all the way through. Uh, I did a video on this a long time ago. I really need to revisit that one. I'll probably do that. But this was a bait knife. Um, it's a big bait knife, but it is one of the best bait knives I've ever come across. And I really liked it. Uh, notice the blade is not extremely uh, wide or anything, not a wide belly on there, but you've got a very sharp edge there. And if you can tell, uh, yeah, I have definitely used this quite a bit. You've got the uh, serrated portion up on top there with some really um, aggressive serrations there. See that? And that is just terrific for cutting through bone and all sorts of other stuff. You've got a very interesting tip there. And uh, that tip is really well made. You've got, uh, can you see that? 
it is a really good tip. And I've actually punched that into ice and stuff without worrying about breaking the tip or anything. I believe this is also 420 uh, high carbon steel. This is, uh, I believe it was the clear water, but you can see there the 021 um, bait knife and it was made in USA. And this is a knife that I've carried often and I uh, really enjoy. Feels great in the hand, uh, but I don't think people think of this when they see buck. Uh, yeah, it rattles, who cares? Uh, nice, um, yeah, hard plastic. I don't know what kind of material it was, but you got the drain holes in there, drain hole on the bottom. So, you know, well, it's going to be used around water. It could fall off the, the, the pier or something like that, or, or you might just drop it. Anyway, the thing is, is you could also end up cutting up, uh, fish on the, the boat or something, not have a place to clean it. So you're going to drop it in here, put away the knife dirty until you get back to shore or until later on that night when you decide to clean your knife. Um, and you could just rinse out the sheath and everything else and clean it all up without having to worry about cleaning it on the spot and uh, not worry about the knife rusting. The, uh, the counterpart to that is right here. This is a, a Mr. Crappie uh, fillet knife, um, nice little four inch fillet knife. And this is the, uh, well, I said uh, Mr. Crappie. This is the 032 have not used this one as much and uh i have not filleted a knife uh filleted a fish with it yet but i have cut up vegetables with it and used it as you know just a basic kitchen knife and uh and used it for uh uh carving um ham and and cutting all sorts of other meat and stuff and it's just a really comfortable grip i i bought this one because i like the the grip of this knife they share the same grip let me see here. See there? Shares the same grip and everything else. And it just feels really comfortable in the hand. Uh, get down on the blade and everything else comfortably. So it's just a really good knife. And I uh, believe this is also in uh, the Buck 420 high carbon steel. Uh, really nice little knife. And also, as you can see here, uh, made in USA. So... Uh, terrific knife but not what most people think of when they say buck uh, most people when you say buck think of this but buck has made a wide variety of knives and i've been happy with the ones that i have bought it's just i don't seek them out um two more knives i i have here they're two little folders uh this one i bought because i collect cub scout knives uh, this is the uh, Buck uh, Cub Light Lightweight. Uh, this is the uh, 414. And uh, this was back in the craze of uh, everything going lightweight and going with plastic candles and everything. I don't remember what the, what uh, I'm going to have to do a video on this in the f near future too. I can't remember what uh, Buck called this material. It's basically like a craton handle. And you see here it says... Can you see it there? Probably not. Ah, uh, there we go. Cub light. And there's the blade. Cub scout. Come on, while you focus. There we go. Yeah, just a nice little uh, lock back. Um, kind of based on your um, um, Buck 110, but lightweight handle. Uh, and I think these, uh, the lightweight knives started coming out simply because, uh, the 110 was not selling nearly as well as they wanted to. And a lot of people were coming out with plastic handled inexpensive knives with a decent blade in it. And, uh, cup and buck basically followed suit, uh, taking some of their regular knives and turning them into, uh, a, a lightweight knife. And, uh, this was the, uh, buck light or a cub light 414 now this over time um evolved into this which is the buck bantam see here made in usa 
but also if you see here, it says U.S. made um, U.S. and foreign parts. And this is uh, what uh, Bucket started doing and a lot of other companies are doing because if you look at some of the uh, case knives you see these days, you'll see that it also says U.S. and foreign parts, but USA made. So they're assembling the knives here uh, with parts made from overseas, but some parts still made here. Um, and this is uh, the Buck Bantam. I think this is what the cup light turned into. They moved a few things around on here though. As you can tell, now you've got a mid lock instead of a back lock. You see there, back lock, mid lock. You got a little lanyard to hold back here. And uh, you got a uh, thumb stud there and it works pretty good. Uh, let's see, you see, there we go. And I kind of like this knife. Um, see there, Buck USA. And then what is the number on there? 234, I believe, the 234, but it's the Buck Bantam. Um, the blade is not necessarily highly polished, but the knife was only also somewhere around 20 bucks or so, so not an expensive knife. Nice, well-made handle. I don't know what it is. Um, it looks like, it's it's hard for me to tell if it has a liner in there or not, uh, a metal liner in there or not. Uh, if it does, uh, it's not much of a metal liner. Actually, what it looks like is that they have cut lightning holes in the inside of the knife. I don't know for sure. I have to talk about that in, in another video in the near future too. But uh, I like this knife. Uh, I like this knife more than the Buck 110, which, you know, uh, it says something about me and also is one of those things that will really upset the uh, the true Buck aficionados out there because, well, you know, the Buck 110 is the Buck knife. Um, when you say Buck knife, 110 is what comes to mind. But um, I would find myself carrying this little Bantam more often than the uh, Buck 110. And I already kind of said the same thing about this. I will more likely carry this out in the woods before I carry the Buck 119. And that is uh, one of the good things you can say about um, Buck knives, though, is that while they still make those um, uh, very popular knives or the knives that were very popular uh, 40 years ago, they have uh, expanded and they have tried to keep up with the times with new designs, uh, both in the USA and a lot of knives uh, out of China. I've got a lot more buck knives out of China, and I will talk about those in another video. Uh, the very first knife I ever, the very first buck knife I ever bought is this one here, and this one came out of China. And this one actually kind of soured uh, my thoughts on buck knives, um, which can happen. Um, often the first knife you buy from a company uh, will cement a, an idea that you have about the company in your mind. And um, we really need to not do that. But uh, uh, I've done it. A lot of people have done it. In any case, uh, we'll talk about Buck China knives in the near future, and I will give a more in-depth uh, look at these other Buck USA knives that I have uh, in the near future as well. But um, I thought I would just show you that, yes, I do have some Buck knives. Uh, it is not a, a brand that I seek out, but... You know, when you have close to a thousand knives, eventually a buck knife is going to show up in there. If I were to ask somebody, what do you want for Christmas or something? And they said a buck 110, I would, I would tell them, good choice. Uh, I'll get one for you. You know, I, I would not even think twice about it. If somebody wanted a buck 110 or if somebody were to say, what do you think of the buck 110? Um, uh, 
uh, as a knife? And I would say, yeah, I, I would recommend that. Uh, if they were to also ask, is there other five inch lockbacks out there that you would recommend before a buck 110? I would say it depends on what you're looking for or what you're looking to get out of that, uh, out of that lockback because there are other five inch lockbacks out there that I think are just as good as a buck 110. Uh, and once again, for the Buck fanboys, I've just stepped in it when I've said that there are other knives out there that, including USA made Buck, uh, oh, Buck 110 style knives, uh, the straight LB7, the, um, the, uh, Camilla's, uh, five inch lockbacks. Um, there's so many, uh, five inch lockbacks out there that I think are comparable in quality and use as the Buck 110. And some of them I would even compare um, and say, I would rather have this one for X reason. But uh, at the same time, I would never tell a person, you made a bad choice because you picked up a buck 110 instead of picking up this knife. Because uh, a lot of that comes down to personal preference. And with that, I'm definitely wondering and meandering and everything else here, but uh, uh, I will try and um, give a little more um, time to Buck. I think it's a fine company. Um, I do uh, make some uh, uh, whimsical comments, especially when they start talking about the history of Buck and the founding of Buck by an, uh, a 13-year-old boy back in 1913 or whatever it was. Like, no, no, the company was founded in 1946 or it was incorporated in 1946. Don't, don't give me the whole Hoyt Buck. Hoyt Buck also perfected, uh, heat treatment. Remember that? But then all of a sudden, uh, every big, no, there I go. There I go. Uh, sorry, sorry. I'll leave it at that. I'll talk more about Buck in the near future. And I'll try and stay focused. Let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with Tobias. I really do appreciate it, and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.